Well, peeps, I thought this is a sort of special time of year because as this goes up, it's close to Uncle Graham within about 24 hours. By the time you get, it probably will be. Entry, wait for this. I'm told my 73rd year. Now, I've got to tell you people, it's all fake news. My body and my brain, are, they're attached by a microfiber now. Right, so the brain is telling me I'm actually about 40 to 45. My joints are telling me you're definitely going into your 73rd year, Graham. But what I do want to do is to thank all you people for sticking with me. Listen, I'm never going to be some big viral, millions and millions of viral video hits type of place. I'm not really interested in that. I'm just interested in giving you guys something to watch. And I don't think there's anybody out there, pretty sure not my age anyway, that's got over 90 million views. And I think we're on the way to 1,200 films up. I mean, can you imagine what I could have put up if I knew about videos 50, 60 years ago? One thing I would have done, I'd have been filming the rivers and showing the young people today, this is what a river should look like. I must have a rant. It's supposed to be a happy time. I'll blow the candles out later on. Anyway, guys, this is something different. I'm going to start putting up more and more of my random stuff. If you think I'm going out in that range tour out there fishing, think again. But I've got 40 plus films backed up for 2024. I'm still plowing through my 2023 section. I've got, I can't tell you how many films I've got of oddball stuff going up, which I think you guys, and I know you do like some of these, but let me know in the comments page. I'm tacking them on the end of the fishing. So you get a bit of fishing to start with, and then you get something random, which is why it's called a random production. Sit back and enjoy a bit of fishing first. Not much fishing really, well not much fish. So I'm trying to grab a really quick uh, session here. We're really, it's going to really be a short one because I was working down the road in Camberley and I thought that's close enough with a bit of leftover bait I could dive into Finch Farm and, and maybe chuck a bait out for catfish. Conditions are good. I was out catfishing last night for three or four hours. Did really well. Different water altogether. Totally different water. This one's a lot smaller. Bigger catfish in it. I think there's one, two, three, four. There's going to be four guys, I think, overnight in here tonight. So I'm going to fish till maybe 7.38, just into dark. And then I'll leave them to it. You know, if I'm caught by then, I'll move on. I've got one bait out over there by the lilies. One bait out by the island. I was going to put a bait out over here. And I sort of can't be bothered. Because I don't, I don't, you know, sometimes you have good vibes and sometimes you don't. I haven't been here for a while, so I'm not, I'm not particularly vibed up. Not five I never, never normally come on a Friday evening because it's just as the anglers turning up for the weekend for a long stint, so it gets a lot of stick. So I'm trying to keep away. Yes, I'm over the flight path or under the flight path or in the middle of the flight path again. Oh, it's so noisy. Imagine doing an all-nighter. They must stop, surely. There is a place worse than this. I won't mention. It's a very, very famous place. I think it's around Chertsey. Oh my God. <laughs> It's horrific. I don't know how the guys carp fishing. Big carp there, yeah, but phew, not for me. Wow, it's so loud. Bit of flying going on with the mosquitoes here as well. Midges. So pleasant enough evening. I'm looking for one run, one fish. Not too big, because there are some big ones in here. Hopefully uh, what I do is, is uh, bring a can of grub with me. I've got a can of ravioli tonight, beef ravioli. I thought it would be different than a spag bowl. Same thing, heat up the saucepan, eat it, gets me through the night. It's not fine dining cuisine, I realise that, but I just want to stay alive till tomorrow. I've got a sandwich left. Other than that, I've eaten everything. I'm sure a lot of you guys are the same when you get fishing. 
little rain clouds over the back there which I could do without coming over here I'm not sure wind direction I think it might be a bit of north in it northwesterly something like that so bite indicators on I'm ledgering this time I was going to float fish with uh, some really good floats I was given I've got to find out more about them at night but here I'd be honest I've only got two I don't want to lose them in the leaves over there a big fish takes you off and bust you you've lost the float it's almost more important not losing the float than losing a fish loaded up I've got the bolly there trying to keep a bit of wind off the mic so hopefully the sounds okay fish has just moved down here because I can see the water shaking I don't think it's big carp here but um, maybe the cats will come on the on the bite and move about a bit we've got a wide selection of baits up in the little tackle shop uh, up by the car park so you can find all the different baits you can want I used to do quite well on a midsection of bluey here and I've also caught on um, lunch, lunch I meat used to be good because it changes almost like a fashion maybe the fish get used to it you can pick up some baits so you can just phone them up and uh, you know, get yourself sorted, whatever you want to fish for. Other lakes down over there as well with smaller fish in them. <clears throat> Actually, I think got a couple of sturgeon in the other lakes as well. It's generally this, it's this catfish pool that uh, attracts the attention. One or two really, really big ones in here. I mean, I'm talking probably, well, I think they are 50 pounds, which given the lilies there and the rushes there is a hit and hold tactics. Still got the blower going over there, the circulation pump. That keeps it uh, highly oxygenated, looks after the fish as well. So I normally would fish locked up and just sit and wait, but I started going on back wine. And even if you don't get to it for a split second, that back wine, that tension of the reel here going around, does actually just hold the hook a second to even grab the rod. This is Mike's reel again. I've destroyed most of them I snapped off the double handle I must have shut it in the car boot I think or trodden it in the bag but it's still usable it's just unbalanced and you have to use it with the handle at the bottom there as you can see there wherever you put it on for it on on, on back one it's going to the weight of the handle will bring it round just a tip I found for catfish in the confined space like this when you first get the hook up, you can generally, in the first shock of a second or two, turn his head around. Now, if you can keep his head towards you and keep the pressure as much as you can, you've got a good chance of getting away from the snags. If he turns around, and I'm fishing six or eight feet from the snags, because that's where everybody fishes, he's going to be in there. If he turns around with a big catfish and gets going, honest to God, you can have 30 pound line and, and you probably won't stop it. So. If you can, try and pile the pressure on early, keep the head going towards you. And what I do, I'll walk back up that bank so that I don't have to, have to give them any slack of turning the reel handle when you, when you wind down the line. That's a bit of slack when you lower the rod to wind the line. That's enough for him just to turn his head to a side and he'll be off somewhere in a nasty old horrible snag or in the rushes over there, something like that. I feel a blank. I've got to be perfectly honest, I don't feel very fishy at all. But... It's got to be worth, what have I got, three hours. I've got a feeling this might be my last catfish trip of the uh, year. This is in the autumn. Might, I might come again. I see where I go. I've, I've, I've had really good fishing on big carp and, uh, and catfishing this past year. Probably, I've probably done a bit more of it and you tend to get a handle on it, but I haven't fished uh, here at Finch for some time. So who knows, it might all have changed. Nothing yet, guys. When I turned up, as I was walking along with the barrow, I thought somebody let their dog off a lead. <laughs> it was the biggest rat I've ever seen, I think. It was humongous. And then there was another one in the bushes here. I'm really pleased I haven't got a bivy all night over there. My goodness me, I need to bring my air rifle. The 
Is that one? I fished just into the dark, not right through it. My light's going guys, not a sniff, some couple of lads the other side of me and they've had anything yet, they've gone off on a walkabout. Um, not a, a twitch or a tweak or anything, it's getting a little, pretty cool now, wind's picked up, grey clouds come in and little specks of rain on the surface and even more planes. Not the most pleasant evening but one fish could turn it around, that's all I'm looking for. Fear the worst. Best thing about this trip is ravioli. Oh, that's right, dinner's going to be served. I forgot the black pepper. Absolutely the mo most dead I've ever known it here, I think, actually. Just nothing moving much. Tiny little one inch fry like this. Tiny little flipping around. No boils, swirls, slaps, jumps, splashes, nothing. I'm gonna give it an hour. I'm gonna pull the pin on this one and write it off as three or four hours. Not entirely wasted, because you never know. But uh, as soon as I got here, I thought, ah, oh, that's not looking right. This is looking right. Right. I just have one slow pull up on the right hand rod. Really, really slow, just pick the rod off the rest. Just barely tightened up on it, nothing, just a drop bait. I think it was probably a small catfish, but obviously they get a lot of attention there, so they uh, can be finicky. However, I'm gonna give it the uh, into darkness just in case that's a sign they might be gonna turn on. I'm doubtful myself, I have to say. Lights are coming on now, so I'm going to get my head cam sorted out and um, head torch and a camera floodlight just in case. Well, there you go. If it's tough, I tell you it's tough. I'm not one of those guys who just puts up pictures of giant fish all the time and don't tell you about the other six blanks I had before I got the giant fish. If it's tough, I'm telling you it's tough, and to me, one of my local rivers, other than Pike and Perch, has been really tough. In fact, I've knocked it on the head. Anyway, we're not done yet. We're going to move into my A-series films of Rand Productions. See what you think of it, and I'm sure quite a few of you guys will like the topics.
people you're going to like this one it's a bit noisy i'm right on the edge of a road but i am you bikers are going to like this i'm here that's right i'm at harley davidson the guildford showroom here and boy have they got some bikes in here you people are going to love this got lovely bikes here so many now mike one of the sales executives in there is going to give you a little run through i'm hoping to get a walkthrough on their workshop that's what i'm hoping for but they've got some great bikes in here and he's going to explain so many models it's ridiculous um, but i'm going to pop in there now have a good old look around so you bikers i know won't switch off now we're going to see what other models they've got so here we are with mike mike you're going to show us around the dealership hopefully yeah, yeah and, no, uh, absolutely um so hello everyone totally awesome fishing show pretty cool to be on a fishing show and Not you were a fisherman before. you were a carp fisherman yes yes yeah so back in the day my dad's a very avid carp fisherman as well so that's cool he's a uh, part of the committee of farnham angling society as well so oh yeah there you go uh welcome to guildford harley davidson i'm mike I'm the senior sales exec here. I am also the founder of Guildford Custom, our in-house custom shop. So uh, I'll show you a couple of bits we're working on at the moment. Uh, I do our YouTube as well, so check it out, Lind Motorcycles. Go and give us a like and a follow and a subscribe and ring the bell and all that other stuff that you do Notifications, yeah. That's it. Ring all that other stuff that you do on YouTube. Uh, so, welcome to Guildford Harley. Um, so what do we do here? We do predominantly new and used Harley Davidson motorcycles um, and we have our in-house custom shop, as we talked about. Um, funny enough, I've got a custom bike just here. So we've been doing custom motorcycles. Uh, we opened the dealership in 2008 and we've been doing custom bikes since 2009. Um, it's gone pretty wild for us, obviously, since we started doing YouTube as well, because it gives you a massive reach, doesn't it? So uh, we've got a custom fat boy just here. Started life as a chromed out custom, well, chromed out stock Harley Davidson fat boy. Um, this bike we're actually building for a guy in Korea. So we've got to send this back to Seoul, Korea in a couple of months when it's finished. Um, yeah, we've gone crazy on this one. So we've blacked out the entire motorcycle. We've got a set of these beautiful Ricks split rim Gimme 5 wheels. Shorty fender. Uh, Why the shorty fender, just? What is that? From a styling point of view, so the rear fender actually is going to finish about here. So uh, that's just our paint at the moment. Uh, but that's going to finish about here, whereas the standard fender obviously finishes about here. It's a bit more bulky, the seats are a bit more bulky. It's a shame it's not here actually, otherwise. In fact, funny enough, we do have. So, uh, yeah, this is one of our uh, seat pans, uh, beautifully trimmed by our good friends at D Class Automotive uh, down in Chobham. Um, so, yeah, that kind of sits there. And then you have a little tank extender that comes down here, and then the fender sits at the back here and stops about here. Got a nice little Guildford custom logo um, that sits on the back of all our most, well, pretty much most of our builds. Um, this That's one, a huge tire. Tell me more about that tire. Uh, so this is a 260. The Fat Boy Standard comes with a 240 mil. Um, but yeah, I mean, 260 gives you that sort of bigger look. I mean, it's big anyway at 240. But then with the shorty fender, it just looks massive, especially when the bike's all sat down and the tire is hugging the fender. This is on Legend Air Ride suspension, so it goes up and down like a transformer. Oh wow, see it moving here. So you can raise and lower the bike just by touching a button, which is pretty, pretty cool. Now tell us, because we've got a big following obviously of fishermen that won't have bikers, although we've got fishermen that do go biking, the reason being this is a big lump if it starts falling over and you pick it up on your own, is that what that's for? To pick the bike up to vertical? Uh, no, no, this is literally to... The drivability? Well, it's it's a th aesthetics, purely aesthetics. So when you park the bike up at a local cafe or whatever, you want the bike to look really, really cool and you want that fender to hug that tire. Oh, I've got you, you yeah. just yeah. drop the thing down. Like the cars, like, like custom low, cars. Yeah, low rider culture, effectively. Um, yeah, I mean, we've been front to back with this motorcycle. So the rear wheel here, not only have we got a 260 in it, We've also cut all of the brake mounts and everything out of this side of the bike, moved it over to this side, and you've got a single-sided uh, pulley and disc brake now. Uh, keeps the uh, what we like to call the A side of the bike completely clean in terms of the wheels. All the brakes and everything are over this side. Tell it, um, what's A side? Explain that to the guys. Just, just the nicer side. The nicer really, side the, to look, yeah. The pipe side, yeah. So I these gotcha. pipes are pretty cool as well. So these are made by a company called Jekyll and Hyde. They're electronic, uh, electronically switchable, so you can turn the noise on and off. So you can basically have them sound stock or loud. 
No, it? no, yeah. you weren't loud. There's only well, one. Yeah, I mean, it's um, a Harley Davidson. <laughs> It's yeah. not a sewing machine. We want to Do you know what? It's a bit of a gimmick, if you ask me, because <laughs> yeah. you probably do it two or three times at the pub to show your mates it could do it, and then yeah. guess what? You just leave it on loud. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, and then we custom paint, like, bits of the engine to match in with the paintwork and stuff like that. Forgive the dust on this bike. It's just we've been waiting for bits to come back from the powder coaters, and we're just waiting for the fender back from the painter and stuff like that. This will obviously get full valid before it's crated up and sent to sold. So, so do you get, get the starting point for this would be just a basic frame? Yeah, so or? basic fat boy. Um, so basically, that bike there, yeah. as you see it, yeah. started life like that. So it's total stripped down and start again, really, that type of thing? Pretty much, yeah. Pretty much. There's a lot of chrome in that. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot oh, of chrome. Yeah, definitely. So, um, and big chunky, really big chunky forks, or yeah, that effect. Yeah, these, these big FL front end, I mean, this is a staple of the Fat Boy anyway since the 90s. I mean, the Fat Boy is obviously made famous by the Terminator films. I um, remember jumping off that bridge thing. Is that the, the one? one? Yeah, that's, that's the, the one. one. So, in fact, my colleague Steve has a 1995 Fat Boy, which is oh, over really? there in the corner behind the Black Boy. That's an original. Yeah. yeah. Uh, how many miles on your bike now, Steve? 99. 99,000 oh, wow. miles. How many jumps like the Terminator? You've had a few, I'm sure. Three. Three. <laughs> as well. There's a there's a real um, sort of renaissance of performance sport cruisers at the moment. So things like the Lowrider ST just here with the old 80s fairings on them. We, funny enough, um, we built a custom bike for a guy just recently. Um, so this is the Guildford custom version of the Lowrider ST. So this uh, belongs to our good friend Matt, and uh, this is based on his 1948 Stinson aeroplane. So, um, yeah, predominantly blacked out in standard trim. We've colour matched the plane and the paintwork to the plane. We have chromed out some of the motor, but then added in cream and bronze detailing. This really cool Screaming Eagle air filter, 1966 collection Harley coverings. We've also put a stage two torque cam in this motor, giving a hell of a lot more punch. Really is punchy motor. SNS two into one stainless steel performance exhaust, so it sounds great as well. Um, yeah, I mean, customized front to back, really. Yeah, lovely, Again, beautiful finish on it. Another seat from our good friends at D Class Automotive in Napa leather with the micro blue piping just to match in. The seats in the plane are actually a beige, but we thought that would so be So it really much. is a bike to match a plane this Yeah, one. oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, we've even gone for a nice Rockford Fosgate stereo system in the dash, which is all Bluetooth, absolutely superb. And it has to be to get over the tone of that exhaust, I've got to be honest. Yes, um, if you can hear it, yeah. Yeah, that's it. So this paintwork, uh, all our paintwork's done um, down in Camberley, actually, at our good friend's Image Design Custom. They, uh, they pump out all our custom paintwork for us and they can do everything from, you know, airbrush uh, to, you know, sort of these scallop designs to, to basic stuff. They, um, yeah, they do some amazing work down there. Those guys are wizards. So. What engine size are they so we know what we're talking so, about? The lump? Uh, this is 117 cubic inches. Uh, so in English money, that's 1925cc. Wow, it's a big unit. Pretty, pretty big. I mean, the smallest motor we do now in our big twin setup is 107 cubic inches, which is 1745cc. Now, on these, they're not, they're a comfort machine more than a speed machine. Would I be saying that really? Yeah, although, I, as I say, we've got a lot more performance cruisers uh, kicking around now. So the Lowrider ST in its standard form comes with the inverted forks, the twin disc slightly higher suspension for more ground clearance for those cor for cornering and stuff like that so you know it's already set up to be a bit more of a handling sporty motor and then having 117 cubic inches thundering under you and gears what, what, what do they have the number of gears or the basics yeah six speed gearbox six speed gearbox in there so thumpy bit of kit actually um the lowrider st has been really popular for us uh, this year and um, we do have one in stock so if you uh, Fancy coming down and buying a lowrider ST or a lowrider? We have them just there. So um, yeah, I mean even in stock trim, it's a beautiful looking bike. That's this one. Yeah. So this one's the lowrider ST, yeah. and this white one here is the lowrider S. Um, tell you what else is cool, actually, that's just come out. So this is the new for 2023. This is the 
CVO. CVO stands for Custom Vehicle Operations. So CVO is Harley Davidson's AMG or M Sport Performance. It's their kind of in-house performance custom yeah. department. So these are a limited run motorcycle. They make they do a run of CVOs every year, and this is the new one. So this is the new Street Glide CVO. Comes with a mega Rockford Fosgate stereo system, liquid crystal display. That's a stereo in and storage, yeah? Yeah, so storage and speakers and amps, speakers in the front. You've got liquid crystal display with Apple CarPlay. More importantly, you've got this new Milwaukee 8 121 cubic inch motor with variable valve timing. Um, what a weapon. Inverted forks, Brembo ABS brakes, traction control, all the gizmos and gadgets. Um, absolutely amazing. Now, last year's bike was like 37-ish, and this is only 38 and a half grand. I mean, yeah, I don't know how they've managed to do that, but they have, it's, it's amazing, so. So this is the, um, this is the LED display. Um, Yeah, it's all pretty impressive. So you got whole, and this can bring up Apple CarPlay. It's got navigation built in anyway, and stuff like that. You can, um, oh, biscuits. Uh, you can <laughs> plug in all your phone and slot that in here, uh, and have that all connected up so it's charging rather than using it by Bluetooth. DAB. Um, yeah, it's an incredible. It's ridiculous. Yeah. For, for for me thinking of what a motorbike yeah, should no, have, you know, it does it does all sorts of crazy stuff. It's fantastic bit of kit that. So. Yeah, lovely, lovely bit of kit. Uh, cruise control, the whole shebang. It's a, uh, it's a proper touring machine, proper touring machine. Reliability wise, Harley Davidson, probably some of the best reliability in the world. Um, and Easy yeah. to work, well they like to work on as a, as a, yeah. as a bike. They're yeah. fantastic, yeah. Because as though the technology is moving on and on and on, they're, they're very much still quite simple and you know with the technology back up from the manufacturer we have you know like the computer systems to, to log in same as you do with the car and such to to, to you know diagnose and no yeah. over the back you mentioned about that tr traditional more traditional let's have a quick look at that one oh, so they get an idea of the uh, original design i'm going to call it yeah steve's fat boy is lovely actually i'll pull that out for you let me just move uh, move this out of the way for you so as I say, it's a shame my bike's not here actually, because that's 1977, but this is Steve's 1995 Fat Boy. So this kind of answers your question on reliability. 1995, 99,826 miles on this motorcycle, and look at it. I mean it is, you know, if it, if it was vivid black, it would be straight out of the Terminator movie. Makuni Carb, Screaming Eagle Mufflers, Sounds beautiful, it's a carburetor model, so it's got that traditional potato potato sound. Uh, beautiful Hydra front end. So the Hydra Glide front end came in in 1949. Uh, they only ran, so the original Hydra Glide was a panhead, and they ran Springer front forks on it for one year in 1948, so one year only bike, and then they came in with the Hydra Glide forks, which is this setup here. And generally across the board, the design has changed, obviously, as you've seen with the new Fat Boy. But essentially, you know, Harley try and change everything, but change nothing, if that makes sense, in terms of styling and, and the way it all looks. So, yeah, beautiful bike, this. Um, Steve's longest relationship, he says. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Let me show you That's a nice old traditional seat. Yeah, yeah no, I mean, he's had it recovered, because yeah. um, obviously, but this is the original side flaps of the, the seat, but he's had the, the centre recovered. Uh, you know, things get old after 100,000 miles, what do you expect? I'm you gonna ask, I mean? being a layman, two tanks as uh, opposed yeah, to Yeah, twin tanks, so um, yeah, both, both fillers either side, so yeah, twin tanks. And that takes what? Just as just, just an unbike, and what does that take? 20 litres? That's quite a lot. What range would that give you on this bike, you know, roughly? Uh, the way Steve rides, probably 500 miles. No, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. to be fair, you probably get 175 miles, I would think, 150 miles, something like that. Are they relatively thirsty bikes, Harleys? No. I don't know. No, they're pretty good, actually. I mean, they are big cubic inch motors, so they are thumping. Um, but, it, you know, look, 
same as in a car, same as on any other bikes, how many times you twist that yeah. and how hard yeah. you twist it. That really dictates on how much fuel you're going to use. Stop, start and speed, that's the thing, isn't it? It's yeah, going to eat more fuel. Yeah, that's it, mate. Yeah, absolutely. So. Hi Graham, so you pop back in again. I'm just going to show you some of our other air rifles that we're doing. So we, we get some older collectible models, a bit more on your era, Graham. Probably oh, not nice. quite as old as you, but we're getting there. Nice, nice. Um, I might have one to show you one day that is a bit older than you. Actually. Older than me, so, yeah. Um, yeah, so what we've got here is, is, I think we might show you this before. So this is a BSA Air Sporter, which people remember from old. It is an underlever. As you can see there, so for us to cock it, we'd have to yeah. All that, which, uh, to, uh, have a yeah. look in there, you'll be able to see in there. So that's the mechanism that you and that's a spring spring fed. So, yeah, if, it, yeah, like, a lot of power, camera, yeah. if you look in here, Graham, yeah, so I pull back, you might actually see the spring moving. Yes, got it, yeah, yeah. So that has to go all the way that back, it goes way back up in here. So, yeah, the base of that spring, that's it to latch, and yeah. then once it's latched. That's it, ready. That's ready, but I was this. I didn't latch it. Then. No. And what you have on this to put your pellet in is a little tap on the top. Oh, I see. I wonder what that was for. Yeah. Yeah. So two two. This one. This one is a two two. Yeah. So you might better have to split it on there. You'll see on there, Graham. Might better get on the barrels. You come up here. You'll that see. would have had a sight on it, I guess. But it would have had off. an open sight. It's been taken off because it's had a, a little old sight one. That's a very old. That's a connection. BSA piece, yeah. four by thirty two. So to be fair, we, we get these. Jazz them up a bit, make them look a bit nicer, and uh, people buy them out of nostalgia more than anything. But yeah. that's where it all sort of comes from, you know. And the silver's a bit unusual on that one too. It's a bit unusual. We've polished that because I think it was painted black, but flaking off and not looking so nice. So, we've given so it a this would have been uh, a popular air rifle of its time, a very of its era. Model. So this is a short version. They've done a snub nose for one year only. Um, I'd love to tell you what the year was, but I can't remember the top of my head. So for, for one edition, they'd done a short one, otherwise yep. it'd be probably, you know, another oh, as long as that. mil longer, yeah. I wonder so, why, what, what what's the benefit between the long and the short? Longer barrel, I'd say over distance, you've more accuracy. Yes. So your pellet won't fall away as quick, probably fly straighter. Um, as you can see, obviously, that's a full length version. You see then about uh, roughly about what oh, I said? Oh, I see, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Of distance. Yeah. So, and this is one that's a, a bit, not quite as old as that. This is a BSA Mercury, not as well known as obviously an Air Sporter and the Meteor. That's the two main ones from that era. Really. Yeah, and then this was the one in between you better see there. So it's still Birmingham Small Arms and it's a 0.177 for a pellet. This has still got the open iron sights. You've also got the rear sight and your front sight. Here we have a look down there. Yeah. And obviously these, these are all adjustable as well, so it's for you to actually sight in your gun. This one on the top, I don't know if you see any movement it's there. It's going up, isn't it? This will go left and right on the top here. It shows you what my eyes are like, but always going up. <laughs> Sad, isn't it, really? No. Sad, this hour I'll catch you bloody fish. No comment. We've got some pipe bungs around there, Graham, might suit you for grayling fishing. <laughs> and then the bottom oh, one it. here, that is your up and down move. I don't know if we can see it moving on there. They might see it, I can't. So you can adjust there. There you go, see it hopping up a bit. So this is to do with aiming this sight in line with this open sight. Now, do you put that V, it sounds terribly basic, mm -hmm. the V notch here into the very pip until it's gone, yep. or do you need to see the whole of the you V the and the pip? So I, I mean, I've, you know, I'm not sure myself. So when I look, you see the V and then yep. you see the top. Top Just the pip. pip. Yep. So you bring the pip up into, into the, v. the V. I've yeah. got you. And that's how you line them up. And uh, this is wood one again. This woodstock? is woodstock. Yeah. So obviously there's different ways of maintaining the gun. So we have obviously wooden stock. These is this is a generally a finished stock already. So you could just use some form of polish and a good cloth to clean it all up. Yep. Um, yep. When you've got an open stock, which I will point you. Actually, go and follow me this way. I'll show you on here. This is an Air Arms Pro Sport, another one there, but you can see that's finished yeah. and that's an unfinished. You called it open stock? So, so it's an open, in the fact that that's already been finished and sealed, that's still open as in the grain still. Oh, I see, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, not, so, one smooth and one's rough. Yeah, so <laughs> what English. I would do with that is to seal that, to bring all the colours and the patternings out, because you yeah. can, I'll turn it in there. You can oh, seal yeah, that yeah, pattern yeah. in the walnut. If you oil that and finish it, 
fills in all these little dots that you see and it'll give it like a glass finish and it oh, looks really? really smart. So well, perhaps I'll show you on that one there to oil the stocks. Right, another thing also on the gun oils. So use a silicon oil. So when you use a natural oil, it will rot rubber, believe it or not. People think it doesn't, it does. So maybe we better show on this one. So when you're cleaning your barrel on these, you get a pull through barrel on there. Well, you can see this is one to be replaced actually. See that rubber seal that's just completely... Oh, I see inside there, yeah? Yeah, and there's that needs a new breech seal, which obviously when it compresses and releases its air, that holds the air in. So all of this, if it's leaking and weeping... Yes, it's you're not losing really... pressure. You're losing pressure, but as you can see, if I just rub my finger on that, that's the rubber breaking down over time. Yeah. So I think rubber has an age. It's a natural product, it won't last forever. So the way to make it, keep it soft and keep it going is purely... I'll have to show you on a new seal, I'll have to get a new seal fitting in this one. You literally just dab a little piece of oil on there. Not much then? No, not a lot. And it's purely, it's like your catapult elastics and that. If you leave them in the light, things like this, they perish, they corrode, they, they rot away. So if you keep it clean, yeah. it'll last longer. So that one I would actually have to give that a replacement seal. Sure. Because this one's due, this is just case it's a pre-owned gun that's in for a service soon. So yeah. that's what we've done. So where I've just cocked that showing Graham about different bits with it, um, a way to disarm it, not so much on the new ones, but the older ones, if you pull the lever back towards you, so you can see the movement there. Yep. Yeah, if you watch here, you can see how far I'm moving. Right, now that's picked up the trigger. If I pull the trigger now, yep. and let my arm go gently, that's the spring released off the trigger. So now that is not safe loaded, now. that is safe now. Oh, that's a good tip, I never knew that one. So, but not on every air rifle, a lot of the old ones you can, some of the new ones you can't. I'll bring mine in, you can check bring it. Bring it in, we'll have a look. Yeah. I'll chop my finger off. Yeah. So cleaning inside, do they need making so cleaning inside? cleaning inside, yeah. So we, we do, so we do a couple of different bits in the shop, so everyone's got a different preference. So this is just a rod set. So you've got a spinny handle one end. Yeah. And we do well, a couple of they go together rods. like um, yeah, drain rods or something. Pretty much so, so. that one into there. Need some glasses, can't see what uh, And then this is for when you've done a lot of pellet shooting, do you get a residual of lead or something in the yes, line? so you might, some people do come in and ask me questions like, my gun's not very accurate anymore. It's yes. going all, it, it keeps getting what they call a couple of flyer pellets that seem to go off. Oh, left, I see, yes, right, yeah. Something different. Nine out of 10 either dodgy batch of pellets, or you've got a few damaged skirts on them, or they've never cleaned a barrel normally. So if you think you've got rifling in a barrel, <laughs> Me, yeah. which is circled yeah. or spiralled down, sorry, if it's full of lead, keep going out eventually, that will fill up. It'll clog. It'll clog. So yep. basically then your pellet won't be flying straight, it'll just be going out, hitting the wind and going wherever. Whereas when it comes out spinning, it generally holds its course, as it its were, course yeah. where it was going. So what we do is we get we get some bore scrub. That's a bore cleaner. It's quite rough, that one. That one is, so just scratch that. it out. So, you got ball cleaner. Yep. I generally like to scrub them out dry to start with, so I'd put on this one. It's quite sharp on your fingers, it is, so be it? careful, because it, yeah. it does get here occasionally. So I'd screw that one on. You get 1.7 and 2.2. One two. Uh, of them I've picked up, I've picked up a 1.7. We've got a 2.2, two two, but I will show you the basic of it. Yeah, it's just need to know, yeah. So generally, I'd push that one down in the gun. And, and you don't need to break the barrel to get through the other side or anything like that? No, so you could do, but I, I find generally, especially with some, some people with more so the PCPs, <laughs> is the fact of where you've got a lever and it sits up, the breech seals in there that hold everything, people yeah. catch them and pull them oh, back I out. See, and yes, then yeah. you've got to strip the gun down and put it back together. So if you keep it all closed while you're doing it, you won't get that problem. So. I, I literally just keep rodding that way. It's quite stiff because the, the brush is holding. Yeah, so it tells you some but You dirt can see there. there's a bit of dirt in there. Yeah. I see it just on the tip there against my hand. That's yeah, it. right on the very tip. So there. that's completely see dry. That. And then what I do, I find it too stiff. Like, I would change and just put the stiff brush on. So you brush out with the, your copper brush. Yes. To, to break everything out. And that's like a coarse nylon brush. Oh, so not metal again. No. This is the metal one. That's the metal. So yeah, okay. it's just a coarse knife. Oh, we brush. see. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, it goes down much easier, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. But the other one's really rough and stiff. That's when it's really bad. So I literally just give it a good rod in through. 
everyone does this totally different. Everyone does a different thing. Targets, so, you're just going to do this after every session, isn't it, I guess? Um, fanatics. And yeah. Fanatics, probably so, are yeah. more into it. The other guys, to be honest, do. Rodent shooting, stuff like that. Tinner pellets you use every 500, give it a clean Oh, quite, yeah. Yeah, you'd yeah. have to be. I know, put them clean them for years. So, a bit of boar scrub, which is just like a foam, really. I'm going to open the gun so we can get down on the floating from this way as well. Best to do it with something underneath, but I'm in the shop, so we're at uh, some more workshop as well. So don't do it on the front lounge carpet. No, because you will be in trouble, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Right. Thank uh, you very much for doing and I'll put the mop head on it. So we'll have to show a pull round. We do a pull through kit as well sometimes, which people prefer, which is like a, a wire you thread through. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. Pull it straight through. But I quite like this sort of setup because you're not pulling nothing through, you can't get anything stuck or wedged in the way. So I'm going to change the head again. And this is something you could give it a quick wipe through, but unless you uh, like with my real live firing guns, every now and again I'll give them a real good clean through. The air yeah. rifles I'm not as full on. Not so much, no, it doesn't matter quite so much. So I'm just going to push that rod down in there. Oh, See yeah. the dirt starting yeah. to remove. You zoom about as much as it zoom. zoom there. You can see it, yeah, all yeah. the map there. So, you know, so this is one that we're doing up as a second hand, but you'll start with, let's give it a bit of a white little cloth that we had. I don't know if the camera will pick it up at all. I doubt it, yeah. It might do. If you look through that up to the light bulb, you will see now it's a cling barrel. Oh, God, I see the spiral. Yeah, can you, say, can you see we're pretty clear now up there, there's no dirt, you can see the spiral all the way around the through to the end. Yeah, that's the rifling we're calling that, are we? Yeah, we are, calling it rifling. Here we go, I can see that, and then here you can see that seal we were going to talk yeah. about, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to replace that seal. Right, so basically you just see on the video this, what we call the rifling up the barrel and you can see, you can see it from front to back, so it's pretty clean. So obviously that was just a rough guide to giving them a quick scrub over and some of the things you can buy to do it. So you've got dropper bottles of oil, which you can use, you can use the aerosols, depends what sort of suits you own thing. So we do. I still, I still like these old ones. So yeah, because brilliant. Because they're the old we school, do. I still like them a lot. But what do you tell us? Tell us in the comments, guys, you know, what were your favorite old air rifles I'm sure. in the 50s and 60s? Yeah. I'm sure some of these would come into it. So the Air Sporter, uh, you've got the Meteor, which is very popular. Did I have a Diana? Something a Diana as well, model 49 maybe. I don't yeah. know all the models, but the Dianas were popular, those. Or even a Gap gun. Remember yeah, them, yeah, yeah. I'll bring one in so you can have a look at one. So I heard something called a Spud gun. That's not the same, is it? No, so the Gap, <laughs> gap gun was the one that you uh, you got corks, you got little darts with it. Oh, really? You push it down yeah. on the barrel and then fire and it used to release. Oh, yeah. really, it's quite a cool little thing. We've oh, got one that's like brand new. So. Well, I appreciate it. It gives guys who also might have the modern ones but might like collecting some of these because you're almost doing it for them, aren't you? You yeah, get them all yeah. cleaned up, then come so in. So we, we do a lot of trade-ins with these and sort of a lot of things with people that you know, don't want their old ones, given up, had it for 30 years, don't want to. Yeah. And then we get the other guys who want what they remember from having exactly. as a child. So we've been doing them up, getting them all cleaned up and fully working and service, which is done by my dad here. And um, yeah, we, oh, we do a good little thing with them. Appreciate that. Thank you very much. Right. So guys, I'm here down as a Land Rover enthusiast. <laughs> Well, not me, but Mike is, or he's going to be, because he's got a lot of work to do. And as you can see, there's plenty of Land Rovers here. And a gentleman kindly going to talk us through, I imagine, your renovation or your the love yeah, of your yeah, life this, here? Yeah, I bought this as a project. Um, yeah. My son got me into Land Rovers when he was about 13. We went to a few shows, and uh, I fancied getting something with a bit of military history. I thought yes, rather yeah. than buy a, um, a standard light Land Rover that's bought by a farmer and... Um, so what age is this one? What, what sort this of age? one's 50, just over 50, well 51 now it is. Really? Crikey. Yeah. So what sort of specs have you had to run through, repairs and, and what have you had to do so to mine's, it? Uh, I wanted to go to Land Rover shows miles away, yes. um, do a lot of mileage in it. So I bought one that's got a, a, a TDI. A no, it was, it was a project when I bought it. Oh no, really? So my son, 13, <laughs> he was 13 when uh, 
when we bought it. I bought it as a project yes. uh, for us to do together. Um, but then he got to 14 and discovered girls. So yeah, yeah well, that's, yeah. that's a problem, yeah. <laughs> well, not a problem for so whoever's my, chasing. So it's been my project and yeah. uh, he hasn't done very much to it. But um, yeah. Yeah, so, so talk, talk us through so it. So it's got a um, diesel engine in out yeah. of a Discovery. So the fuel consumption's a lot better. It goes a bit quicker. So I can use it on the motorways. Get yeah. shows. Went to uh, Normandy uh, earlier this year and it been to North Wales. Um, all over really. So, so size engine in this? What's it? Two and a half litre turbo. Oh, on, a, on, a, on a road run I'm going to call it, is that pretty thirsty or are they more thirsty when you're about, over, over land? It's about just over 30 to the gallon I suppose. I oh well it's bearable isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah the standard petrol on these are just about 18 I think. So um, yeah. yeah. Okay so talk us through it. So like, you got a box at the front, yeah, would that have been so previously what an ammo box? Yeah that was an ammo box so that's not standard that's um, was put on by a previous owner, so that's obviously where I keep my tools. I think Mike's invested in some big wheels, so you've got quite a lot of ground ground clearance with these, haven't you? Yeah, obviously yeah, for taking a reason. It, taking it off road, um, so they do quite well. Go down roads that say not suitable for motorised vehicles, and it just plods along quite happily. I was brought, no I, dramas. I guess most of the people who just want to do that, that's what they're for, that's what they're built oh, for, yeah, isn't it? Absolutely, that? yeah, yeah. And this one is. Is it a numbered one? Is it a, you know what do you actually call the physical number of this? This one's a series three, so it's one of the uh, first series three lightweights that um, came out. It's number four hundred ninety-six. Um, you actually know the number of it then? Yeah, the chassis number. Yeah. So. And made where 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 with been the production? Solly Hole up in Birmingham. That was the main area, was it? That's where they were all made. Yeah, and they still make um, Defenders, Range Rovers. Discoveries up there now. And what sort of work did you have to do? If we have a sort of look inside it. Yeah, yeah. And what's he like? Is that is that is a bone rattler? Uh, like my, oh yeah, my yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, it is a bone rattler. Noisy, especially with a diesel engine in. But uh, it goes all right. So I cruise down the motorway at sixty in it. Um, and that's sufficient, yeah. And, yeah. and it, welding wise, what sort of work have you had to do? Do you have any problems with the chassis you've had to? I just replaced the chassis on it. So. Now, when you say replace, that's not repaired, i.e., welded. You replace a whole chassis? A whole chassis, yeah. Wow. Bought a brand new one, galvanised. And, uh, Did you yeah. build that yourself? Yeah, yeah. I took yeah. it all apart and uh, put it all back together. Wow. It was quite hard work. I can imagine that was, yeah. So it's to be sort of cut and then lifted off. Well, okay. unbolted. You don't Is it unbolted it. or you don't need to cut it? Or no, no, no. It's all, they're uh, like Meccano. That's, that's, that's why I've heard. I like them, yeah. Just, yeah. The whole thing comes apart. It's nuts and bolts? Yeah. So inside this have been used as a sort of a, a personnel carrier, really, so I think, really. They were used for all sorts of things. Originally, they um, they made these. These are military spec. They were made to fit inside aeroplanes. So, oh, they were? Um, yeah. 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 So they had lifting eyes for lifting with helicopters so they could be dropped near the front line. Um, or transported in aeroplanes. They're a bit narrower than a standard civilian um, Land Rover so that they could fit them side by side in a, um, in an aeroplane. And then would they have had, I'm going to call it basic kid stuff, machine guns mounted on the front? Do they have various types of they have these had, vehicles? Because yeah, they're not dropping yeah. them in there to, to make sandwiches, they're going in for a job, aren't they, you know? Well, yeah, some of them had um, had that sort of stuff added on, yeah. um, machine guns and extra um, fuel tanks oh, um, on the side. Yeah, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you what I don't find, because this is a project for Mike coming here, is I've got a very, very old trailer. It was, as my, I got it for my granddad, that's how old it is. It's got the leaf springs. To me, it looks ideal for conversion to an ammo truck. Now, I, oh, don't, right. I don't see those. I don't see them about. Are they rare uh, to get old trailers? Look, it's not a military one, but it is of the age. So, is the, it, are yeah, they quite yeah, rare to get? People do run the military ones. Yeah, you can buy them off, off yeah. eBay and, and things like that. So. Yeah, yeah. So still about then? Yeah, the Sankey trailers. That's what you want. The Sankey one. A Sankey, yeah. yeah is, is what these would have pulled. They've got the special tow hitch on the back. Yes. That fits one of those military. If you look at uh, that red one over there. Yes, yeah, the hook. It's got the. Yeah, it's got the special hook. So it's got like a civilian ball. Yeah, um, yeah, just yeah. a ball joint, yeah. yeah. And electrics wise, what have you had to do with this electric? You've had to strip all the electrics out, put new looms in or anything? No, no, I did when I um, replaced the chassis, I put a rear, new rear loom on. 
the balloons in two parts, the front and the rear. So I oh really? The rear. Are they fairly basic? To, I mean, to me, it's all gobbledygook. Yeah, all but the, is it all the? Um, if you look at the wiring diagram, it all fits on one page. Oh, really? If you look at a modern car, it's like spread throughout the book, and it's got this is the main wiring loose, but um, this one all fits on one page. Have you got a nice, although albeit modern, it's quite a nice. What is that? A cooler? A cooler yeah, system that's there? A fridge, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I go camping away a lot, so uh, yeah. Uh, what, can we look inside? What, how does that open? Now, this quite, I've not seen one like that, so you pull it around. So you put what the blue packs in there, you know, or do you have no, to pre, no, you pre chill it, or how does it work? Or is it battery run? powered, you can see the lights are on. Oh, I see, it runs off a of battery. Yeah. Oh, for this battery, or do you have a supplemental one there? It's got um, one built in, so it'll run in off. In this, yeah. Yeah, so it'll run off the um, car um, while you're driving along, yes. and then when you stop, it switches to the internal battery. And what sort of uh, duration will you get out of those, you know, a um, couple of days of chill? 20 hours I reckon, but I've got a solar panel so it would recharge from the solar panel during the oh, day. Oh gotcha, that's a good idea, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then uh, overnight it would just run on the battery. Yeah, that's great, yeah, that's good. And I'm looking at these hooks. Yeah. Is that because the top used to come off and they put cam? Well, what was that? What were you got well, hooks? If you look at the one next got to you. round here, like this. They were all, 99% oh, of them had the canvas tops on. Yes, that's uh, what Mike's got on his, yeah. Yeah, so they look virtually all have got that and I've just converted mine to a hard top because the canvas kept rotting and yes, I yes, got fed up with replacing it every few years so yeah well. that, that, that's exactly the problem he's got I and mean, the guys are saying oh you need to treat it with theirs another guy said there's a a brick I'll come around this side because the sun's bright yeah is um like a brick proofing yeah, thing yeah. you can put over them and that would do it but of course yeah. you cover it over the plastic sheet because you don't want it to rust and it gets mildew yeah, I mean, that's, that's, right, yeah, that's yeah. the problem so it's, not, it's, it's something you can't really beat really no, no, unless you've got it garaged over the winter, then... Um... Well, that's good, that's appreciate it, that's, that's something okay. different anyway. Yeah, appreciate your help, thank okay. you very much. All all <laughs> and the, the group here are, do they call it, was it Southern Lamb Rover? That's one of the clubs that come here, but they're just, it's just a random collection of people here. So. Oh, it is, it's not yeah. representing a specific no. Southern Counties Club or anything like no. that. They're all individual collectors, I'm going to call them, yeah. or enthusiasts. Enthusiasts, yeah. Oh, that's brilliant, yeah. Call. Oh, that's lovely. Thank you very much. Okay. For that. There you go, people. You can see what I mean when there's possibly not another fishing channel, certainly, that's putting up Harley Davidson motorbikes. 0.22 air rifle servicing. <laughs> Lamb hovers that they dropped out of helicopters or planes or whatever. I mean, you could admit you've got a diverse amount of topics and stuff, interesting stuff, I feel. A lot of you older guys are going to like watching them. And if I don't film it, some of this stuff's gone and, you know, this older stuff is gone. I enjoy filming it, and more important, I'm sure a few of you out there, listen boys, if only 10 people watch a film, I'm still making the films, because I enjoy doing it. If you guys enjoy watching it, so much the better. So again, thanks for supporting us, I really do appreciate it. I'm going to plough on, the day will come when I call it quits, the joints will anyway, so enjoy it while I'm doing it. And I'll get as many films, well... I'm hoping to do two a week up to Christmas. Why did I say that? We'll see you in the next one. Only going to be 48 hours away. See you next time.